In this video, I'm going to show you a process for working in vector art in Adobe Fresco and then moving it over into Adobe Illustrator. So all of these motifs that I've been working on in this file were painted with the Fresco vector brush, which is right here. And there are so many settings and other things we can talk about in a separate video. But what this does when I paint with it is it's basically like working with the blob brush. So it makes these expanded shapes. Each stroke is a shape like that. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is just take one of these flowers, I've got the, its layer selected here, and I'm going to copy it over to another document. So I'll tap on Copy Layer, and then go over, start a brand new document. And here on this layer, I will paste the layer. So now I have that flower just on its own in another document, and then I'm gonna scale out from the center here to make it bigger and tap done. All right, so now we have this whole vector layer here. And one thing that I like to do kind of to mimic what happens in Illustrator, you know, when you're using the blob brush in Illustrator, you can set it so that strokes of the same color merge together. So if I draw a stroke here and I draw a stroke here, that these will actually be one path, you know, that's merged together. When you do this in Fresco, these are actually separate paths. So I would have two lines when I go into Illustrator. So what I wanna do is my little trick for this is to get the fill bucket and I'm gonna choose another color here just for the sake of showing you this, that when I tap here, and it's gonna take a second, when it fills it, when it fills it with a different color, this all becomes merged into one thing. So this will simplify this art greatly when I take it over to Illustrator. Now you'll see all of those little black specks, those are separate shapes. So we can't do this with all of them, but at least I've simplified most of the flower here. For the sake of this though, I'm gonna go back to the black color just cause that's gonna be a little easier for me to see and work with. Next thing I wanna do is create some fills for this flower. And I'm gonna do this using reference layers. So I've got my layer selected here. And if I go into the more options menu, I'll choose set as reference. And that allows me to fill bucket paint on layers below. And the paint will just flow into the shapes here that I have on the flower. So I'll choose a different color here. Let's make it light. Then with my fill bucket on this lower layer here, if I tap, it's going to ask me, do I want this to be a vector layer or a pixel layer? Definitely vector. And then I'm just going around and filling every one of these petals and this little shape right here. Now notice if I turn this off, you can see what I've done there. And I can create the rest of the fills on separate layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another fill, pick another color, and with my fill bucket on this lower layer here, I'll just start tapping and it's gonna ask me, yes, I want it to be vector. And just tap in each one of these little petals. And at this stage, I don't really have to think too much about what color I want everything to be. Let me create another layer. Uh, because it's so easy to change colors over in Illustrator that as long as these are different colors, you know, everything that I want to be one color is one color and everything I want to be another color is another color. That's really all that you need because Illustrator and Recolor Artwork just make that just so easy. All right, so I'm on a separate layer, got my fill bucket and I'll just fill that in with a vector. All right, so I've gone ahead and colored this and we can see um, when I turn off that layer, I have all these nice little individual shapes and they're on separate layers, but they do act, you know, while we're here in Fresco as kind of like one shape. So if I grab uh, the transform tool, you know, everything that's on this layer is part of this shape here, but these will be individual petals once I go over to Illustrator. All right, so let me just back up, put that back into registration. The next thing I wanna do is just paint some new shapes. So I'm gonna go and turn the visibility of this layer on just so I can come in here and say, all right, I wanna release the reference. Cause for this, I'm actually just gonna be drawing and I don't wanna have that reference layer happening. And then I'm going to go to this pink petals, add a new layer. 
and this time I'm going to use my vector brush to paint in some shadow shapes. And actually, I want to turn off the black here just so I can see more clearly where I'm painting. Start with that layer. And I'm just kind of painting like a shading shape here. And it's important that you close the shape because when you fill it, you don't want it to fill the whole layer. Again, I'm not terribly worried about the color here. So if I leave a gap there and I tap, I fill the whole layer. So don't do that. Mine has a little lag because I think I have the smoothing on pretty high here. All right, so these are kind of just shading shapes here. I'll speed through this part of the video so you don't have to watch me draw each one of these. And then I'll go back with my fill bucket and fill those in. And now when I turn the flower back on, we can see kind of what that's doing there. And again, these are all individual shapes on these separate layers. Okay, great. So I've prepared the art and now I can send it over to Illustrator on the desktop. So to do this, just turn every layer on that you want to send. And then for example, like this background layer, I'm just going to turn it off because I don't want to send it. Then I'm going up to the top right and tap on the publish and export button, tap on open a copy, and then tap on Illustrator desktop. And we can see it's sending it. And so over in Illustrator, we have this pop-up window here and I can see a preview of the flower. I definitely want to have convert layers to objects chosen so that we're not creating an image. This has got to be vector art after all. And then when I click OK, this is going to be making you know, a separate document here that's uh, got everything basically imported from Fresco. I want to go ahead and make my layers, let's see, panel options. I want to make these larger so that we can see this better. And next, the challenge here is to organize this art so that it works more in an illustrator way. <laughs> and then simplify the art so we rid ourselves of any excess anchor points. So we're gonna do those two things. Let me back out here. So organizing the art is basically so that, you know, we have a flower that works as a flower, not as something in a bunch of pieces on separate layers um, that won't work as well for a motif, like we're gonna be using this if we were making a pattern out of it. The most complex art of this whole stack here is gonna be the black layer. And if I turn down the triangle here, what you see is just like I showed you before, most of this flower art has been merged together. It's one compound shape, which is great. And then over here, if I turn this off, all of these extra little doodads here are just stacking up here on that layer. So there's so many of them that I really want these grouped together. So if I just go ahead and select all of these and let's see there is a little bit of you can see that's what you know when you pick up your pen in fresco you get a couple of little shapes i must have colored that in and then colored it in again you don't have to go to the trouble of merging them all like this but i just kind of wanted to show you that so what i want to do backing out again is just select all of these and then command or control g to group them so now everything on this layer here, our black line art is a lot simpler. We have a group of all the little extra doodads and then we have the main compound shape and then I'm going to group these again. So now this operates as one object and it'll be a lot easier to work with here. Another thing that I want to do is simplify it. So if I come over to the document info panel and you can always open this by going up to the window menu, but I like to keep it here in my workspace. I can see that this has 2,700-ish anchor points, and that's a lot. It's not too much if this is an illustration, but if this is repeating art, and particularly art that you might want to use inside of pattern editing mode, this could potentially slow Illustrator down. So I like to do a little bit of simplifying just to make things run faster in Illustrator. So I'm going up to the Object menu, and then to Path, and then Simplify. And we get a slider here that we can work with. If I do this at 
we're changing this from 2700 anchor points into 1100 ish anchor points, which is great. I always suggest that you play around with this slider so you really see the difference. Like if I go to the minimum end, it gets really smooth. It loses some of that gritty character that I had. If I go all the way up to 100%, I'm going to save anchor points here. I've saved about seven or 800 anchor points at this high fidelity, but maybe what I want to do is just somewhere, you know, split the difference. So I'm looking to see that I still have the roughness here that I started with, but fewer anchor points. So you just find the balance there with that slider and then click OK. And now I've simplified that flower. The rest of these, you can turn the layers down and see, for example, the red center there. That's just a compound shape. And by the way, a compound shape is any shape that has holes in it, like this one. So that is one thing. Let's go over here and look at some of these other layers here. So these are just individual dots. Let me group those. Here we have individual petals. And sometimes if I'm feeling really picky, I look for little shavings and extra things. These are all shapes that I want to keep here. So I'm not worried about that. Let's go down here and see if I can find any of those little extras. Nope, that, that looks really good. And I'll turn this one down. And here's like a little thing that looks like a shaving, but it's actually this shape right here. But you know, every once in a while, you'll find some little extra pen blob that you put out here that's too tiny to see, but you can see it if you look here in the layers panel. So, so that's part of my cleanup process. I like to get rid of those things. And then I like to just come here and group these because you know they will be easier to work with as groups later. Grouping them. Let's see, is this, that's grouped already, that's grouped already, or that's a compound path. And then we've already grouped this. So turning everything back on at this point, what I can do is group them all together. You can keep a copy of these layers if you want to, and just copy this group onto another layer. For me, I'm just going all the way. I'm going to command or control G. Now it's grouped. So you can see that it's already put it at the very topmost layer because a group can only exist on one layer. And then all of these other layers here are empty. We don't see any of those twirl downs. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I deselect and then get rid of these layers that I don't need. And I'm going to rename this one flower because vector layer is a remnant from Fresco and I've moved on here. So I like it like this. All right. So now that I have a flower, it's been somewhat simplified. I could go through here if I wanted to and grab maybe this group here, the pink um, art and simplify it. Let's take a look. Object, path, simplify. And the good thing to talk about here, if we're going to simplify any of these shapes that are abutting where the pink is bumping right up against the, the black. And this is how, you know, we did this with the fill bucket and the reference layer in Fresco. So I don't want to simplify this to an extent that it will start opening up little gaps here. So just be aware of that. If you're simplifying any of this kind of abutting art, um, you'll want to go up for a higher percentage here. But again, even something like that can yield a lot of anchor point savings. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So now when I select everything here, and I look at this, it's 3000 anchor points. So it's quite a bit better than it was before. Now that this art is organized, we can actually really have some fun with it and use recolor artwork. Just copying a separate flower over here. Let's just try generative recolor and see what it will come up with for us. When you're starting with art that has black in it, sometimes I like to go to advanced options and just make sure that black can be recolored. If you see that there's no arrow there, you would just tap on that arrow to make sure that you'll see black on both sides of the equation here. Click OK. Go back to recolor artwork, go to generative recolor, and just say 1960 hippie flower, like that. Generate and see if generative recolor understands my 
style prompt there. All right, that's interesting. And you know, from here, there's so much more that I can do, especially with recolor artwork. And that's something that I cover in other videos, but it's really the process of getting your fresco vector art into Illustrator so that it's easy to work with. And then the world of generative recolor and pattern editing mode and all of those things really opens up to you. So that's why I like to start by simplifying my art and then, you know, I can make a grid or a radial repeat out of it and, you know, basically just start having fun with it. All right, so I'm Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator online and I have a newsletter where I send out Illustrator tips and tricks a couple of times a month. To sign up, see the link in the description below the video. All right, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.